Welcome to today's session, setting up and using tables in Excel. It's something that's really very easy to do and it helps take the headache out of managing data in concise terms within Excel. So from an overview perspective, we're going to look at, you know, why, why do you want to do this? And the, the reality is, is it allows you to control data much easier in Excel than you do if you just have your own range of information. So putting in a table wraps some constraints around it that Excel manages for you and it, it makes it very nice. So um, hopefully you'll gain some knowledge out of this on, one, why you should be using tables. Two, if you start using tables, you can go to the next step, which is, is making pivot tables and managing information. It's more um, kind of a subset of a database, but it's very valuable to continue to use. And the only assumptions we have are that, one, you have an understanding of the type of information that you want to track, and you have a goal of what you want to get out of it. So as long as you have those intentions in hand, uh, this video will help, for, help you tremendously. So um, the things we're going to cover is one, creating a table from a range of information. And then within the table, once it's created, we're going to cover what the header is, formats. Um, you can format it lots of different ways automatically through Excel with their designer. Calculated columns. There's a total row that you, row that you can use. And then sorting and filtering. And then we're going to actually start into a sample uh, right now. So hang on one second. Okay, what we have here is in this example is basically we have two ranges of data. So there's no table here yet. So in the range of data, I've got a title of what the column header is. Then I've got some content. And each one of these is the same. There's some conditional formatting that automatically color things based on if the value of the cell is equal to green, then it shows actually green. And this also shows that if the value of the cell is an even number, it shows green. So you can see that there's an even number. I'll even just you know, overwrite this to make sure that it's consistent all the way down the bottom. And I wanted to fill that series. So now we have even numbers highlighted. So that matches both sides. So we have you know, basically the same information. It's now just in a range of data. So um, if we were to take and create a, the way you create a table is you're going to highlight your header row all the way through to your data. And I'm going to go to the Insert tab. I'm going to insert a table, and I do have a header, so I'm going to accept it as it is because it will automatically be based on what I highlighted. So now this is a table. So th a couple things happen just by saying converting this range into a table. One, I've got a border on the outside of what Excel is now managing this for me. It understands what columns are, what rows are, all contained within this environment. The other thing it does as well is it provided a design. So it, it does alternating row colors as well as the header. I can change this just by going up to the design tool and selecting a different design. So as an example, if I didn't want any row alternate colors, I can leave it this way or I could go down to here with row alternate colors or make it green based if I want to or even just green headers without a blank. So I'll just select this green. So I've just changed the design color. The other thing that happens is this header is predefined and a filter is automatically applied. So in order for me to do this, I would have had to done several things on my range uh, by highlighting this and selecting data, then selecting the filter column, which would automatically apply a filter to this range of data. So what, now that it's a table, that's always that way. I can shrink and grow it based on me inserting or adding columns or rows. So let's, let's talk about how the protection works. So in a range of data, if I were to delete this row in this range, I select, and I say delete. I get prompted with what do you want to do with everything else on this spreadsheet? Okay, if I'm going to sh if I delete this row, I can shift the same number of columns and this row will come up or I can shift them left or I can delete the entire row which will impact everything on that row. I really don't want to do that. I can delete the entire column which would take basically h through m out of the picture. So if I say okay, fine, I'll shift cells up. That shifted that up. If there was any information down here, it would have rolled that up as well. Okay, so if we want to be a little bit more controlled from that, I'm going to go ahead and undo that delete. Now here's where the protection comes in. So a couple of things that a table um, does for you. You have something called calculated columns and totals. So as an example, if I wanted a total bar down at the bottom, I can just go into my table tools in the design mode and select total role. This adds a total at the bottom. So every column just like I can sort by it, I can now total on it or count or sum. So if I wanted to know what the count was at the bottom here, I could just say count. So that tells me there's 17 rows. Not that I didn't already know that. 
Uh, another example is I can average the quantity here. And the same formatting goes, so if I want that to be a little bit prettier, I can reduce the number of digits. And then as the price, I might average the price. And, and I'll go back up here, same thing. That's the average price, and I'll go ahead and do this as a total instead. I'm going to sum that. And I don't want those extra. Oops, wrong way. Okay. So that's an easy way to total my table of values. And if I wanted to see only quantities 1 because of the filter capabilities, 1 and 2, as soon as I hit that filter, my, my quantities change for me. So I can see summary information very easily, just like highlighting. Um, and I get my sums down here while I get it as a continual view of whatever the filter is on that table. Very, very handy stuff. Now let's talk about the protection and the calculated cells here. So you notice when I created the table, the value of all my calculated cells is referencing a cell. Just like this, it references a cell. If I were to create this inside a table, it will automatically reference the table column. So instead of C4, I'm just going to say I want you to go to this particular cell. It's now called Table 5, this row, quantity. It calls it by the header name. As soon as I hit Enter, two things happen. One, it automatically copied that cell value down this whole column. So as I scroll down, I can see it's now referring to it by the table name and column name. Very handy. And here's where the protection comes in. Let's say I wanted to change things up a little bit. Instead of having the color here, I want it to be reversed. Because the way the cell calculation works over here, if I move this around, uh, I'm going to take, let's say, color here, and I copy this information. And I'm going to go right here, and I want to insert it. And I'm going to shift cells to the right. So everything's fine, but now I just want to delete this. So I'm going to highlight that and delete it. And I'm going to shift cells left, so bring it back in. So everything pulls over. Now to do the same process in a table, all we need to do is select our table column and then just grab it. Once we get the right handlebars there, we'll grab it. And you'll see the insert point with the highlight gray is this column that will now be inserted over there and I'm done. So I don't need to worry about what was selected. It handles that for me and it keeps all of my formulas intact as well. Now the final thing we'll cover is kind of the other side of the protection that the table provides you. So if I have information that's outside my spreadsheet, I want to delete a row. And I delete, I have a different type of um, drop down. So if I delete the table row, you notice that it pulled my table up. It did not impact anything over on the outside of my table. Now if there was information below, it would have pulled that up, but directly to the right in the columns, it does not impact any of that. So it allows me to work with data directly within here. The other thing that happens are formulas and calculated formulas will automatically be created if I were to insert rows. So if I were to insert a table row above, you notice that all of my um, uh, formatting stayed the same, and then as I scroll over this, all of my calculations are still there as well. Whereas if I insert something over here, one, I've got to make sure I, I grab exactly the distance I want, then I insert, and then I say shift cells down, and guess what, I've, I've, as you can see, I've now impacted, if for whatever reason I did not highlight everything I needed, I'm now no longer aligned, and then I don't have any of the formulas that come up. Now the conditional formatting does, but the rest of the formulas did not come over. So those are the little things that really make a big difference when you're trying to create this information. And then I can always um, copy with the handlebar down too. Now we're going to look at some of the sorting features and filtering features. So if for some reason I wanted to filter this or sort this information, I would need to highlight everything that I wanted to change order form. If I forgot, again, to select a column, it would sort within that and for, I would now lose information that's tied to a particular row. So if I want to sort this, I can actually just right click and say sort smallest to largest. And it's going to automatically use my leftmost column. If I wanted to do this by name, I need to go up to the data, go to my sort button here, and then select name. And I'm going to say values and then A to Z. So this will now sort it by name. So I've got to use the menus and go elsewhere for that to happen. In a table, in order for me to do this, I just need to select my column and say sort by that particular column. And the other thing, too, is I can actually now do name, and I'll filter on, let's say, just one of these items. 
This gives me a lot of functionality. So if I have combination here, I wanted to see the lowest to highest price. I can now sort by this, and it, and it maintains all of my filters at the same time I'm doing that. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, presentation on tables, and hope you're able to start using this information immediately. Um, tables are a, a wonderful tool that Excel has. And again, it's a stepping stone to the next step, which will be pivot tables. Hope you have a great day.